Hey guys, Jexy here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, um, it may be a little controversial, but I hope you guys will bear with me and listen to the whole thing. I would like to discuss what I believe is how NA views uh, Suboxone and other medically assisted treatments. Now before you go to the comments and start leaving all of your thoughts, listen to what I have to say first and then let's talk about it. Okay, so before I start this video, I need to do a couple disclaimers, and I want you to listen to these disclaimers very clearly, okay? One, this is my opinion. This is my views and my thoughts only. I do not represent Narcotics Anonymous. Although I am a member and have been for some time, my views in no way reflect the organization as a whole. You are going to find many other members who completely disagree with me and who will say that the organization disagrees with me. I'm giving you my own thoughts based on my experience. It's also really important that when we do talk about this in the comments, that we do so with a loving and caring nature, even to those who may have varying various opinions. Not everybody who I am friendly with in Narcotics Anonymous believes the same way I do, but that's okay. The beauty of programs like NA is it's not uniformity, it's about unity. It's about coming together as a whole, even if we believe different things. So if you're watching this and you don't know a lot about Narcotics Anonymous, a couple things. One, although I am a member, again, I do not represent the program. It actually goes against our traditions for me to sit up here and do a video and tell you that I am a representative of the program. I am not. I am simply a member with personal beliefs. And I want you to understand that because I want you to know that what I say in my video right now about NA is really my opinion. Okay, and I know that that sounds crazy for me to keep saying it over and over again, but anybody who's a member of a 12 step program will understand why it's important to make that distinction. When I talk about medically assisted treatment, I am talking about all medically assisted treatment, which would include methadone, suboxone, and uh, like Vivitrol, naloxone. If you are unfamiliar with what those are and how they work, I do, I will link a video, I'll put a card up on whatever side it is. <laughs> for you uh, to watch, and I will leave the link in the description. I did a video that was purely talking about the scientific studies of these medications, and I link a bunch of peer-reviewed articles in that video's description. So if you're not really familiar with the science behind it, I encourage you to watch that video too before forming an opinion. Because my belief is that a lot of the opinions that people, it, people in Narcotics Anonymous have on medically assisted treatment and how it works alongside the program, are because of misinformation that is around about medically assisted treatment. So, where did this conversation start? This conversation has been around since the start of methadone, which was popular in the early 90s. Um, it was around before that, but the early 90s is really when it took, uh, mid 90s is when it really took a hold and a lot of people in Narcotics Anonymous were coming in, uh, a lot of people uh, on methadone were coming into Narcotics Anonymous. So, Narcotics Anonymous World Services put out a bulletin. It's called Bulletin Number 29, and it is what I think is the most destructive piece of literature ever put forth by the organization. Now, again, this is my opinion. However, what it is important to know is that a World Service Bulletin is not considered NA-approved literature. So, all literature, all of our IPs and all of our books are what we call NA-approved. What that means is it has gone through a strict process where every single member has gotten to read through it and vote on it and, and have say in it. A world bulletin is just put forth by the World Service Board Committee members, which at the time uh, where this was written, actually some of the members in different parts of history were not always addicts. They were not always members of the organization. Now that has changed and they are only members of the organization. But back in the 90s, that was not the case. So I'm not even 100% sure when Bulletin 29 was written, if the people who wrote it were even part of our program. Now, I say that because there comes a, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me read you part of Bulletin 29, and I'm going to explain on why this, I believe, this one piece of literature is the basis for a lot of people's uh, feelings of medically assisted treatment. However, luckily we do have new literature that talks about it. So we're going to get into that. 
But I want to get to the idea of why people have been so aggressively adamant against medically assisted treatment in programs like Narcotics Anonymous. So Bulletin 29 says, uh, oh, I, I had it, but hold on. Okay, I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but I'm going to read you this part, okay? It may be argued that a group's autonomy, as described in our fourth tradition, allows them to decide who may share at their meetings. However, while this is true, we believe that group autonomy does not justify allowing somebody who is using to lead a meeting, be a speaker, or serve as a trusted servant. And then it, it, it goes off about how it, uh, and then uh, they suggest that those who have used any drugs within the last 24 hours refrain from sharing, uh, but encouraging to get, to member, get together with other members after the meeting. Uh, I'm just making sure... We make a distinction between drugs used by drug replacement programs and other prescribed drugs because such drugs are prescribed specifically as addiction treatment. Our program approaches recovery through addiction, uh, from addiction through abstinence, cautioning against the substitution of one drug for another. Okay? And it goes on. But that, that one part where it talks about people being on medically assisted treatment, not be allowed to hold service positions or speak, is what I believe is the core of this argument. Now, a couple of things to understand about Narcotics Anonymous. One, we have a, uh, not only do we have 12 steps, which is how we get freedom from active addiction, but we also have 12 traditions, which allows us to carry the message. The first thing to point out is that our third tradition states that the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop using. We do not ever make distinctions against who can be a member and who can't based on medications. That is very clear. Our third tradition says if you want to be a member, you just have to have a desire to stop using. The other, um, number five, our tradition number five states that um, our group's primary purpose is to carry the message to the addict who still suffers, right? So the most important part of any NA group is to carry the NA message to somebody who's still suffering. And what's the NA message? The NA message is that an addict, any addict, can lose the desire and stop using, right? Can stop using drugs and lose the desire, right? Now, we also have other IPs that talk about um, illness and recovery and taking medications in recovery. And then we have medically assisted treatment. Now, what a lot of people will argue is that medically assisted treatment and other medications in recovery are not the same because one is used to treat addiction, and the Narcotics Anonymous program believes that through abstinence and working the 12 steps, that freedom from active addiction is possible. So here's where my opinions come in. I just wanted to lay that groundwork so that you can kind of understand the argument. I believe that Narcotics Anonymous has no opinion on medically assisted treatment, as Narcotics Anonymous has no opinion on outside issues, which is another one of our traditions. It also says that um, NA's name ought never be drawn into public controversy, right? And one of the reasons we don't have opinions on outside issues is because by using NA's name in arguments, it will bring us into public controversy. Right now, there is not much more controversial than medically assisted treatment. I think it's also important to understand that much of our literature was written in the 80s and uh, revised maybe in the early 90s, and had much of it has not been revised since then. And the reason I bring this up is because a big problem um, during that time was people who were taking large doses of methadone and holding service positions. So if you are leading a meeting and you are on high doses of methadone, and it is very clear that you are taking methadone because you're nodding out and you're up there chairing a meeting, Obviously, that presents a problem, right? If you have somebody who is high and they're holding a service position, it obviously is going to create a problem because anybody who's new in the program is going to say, well, wait a second, how am I supposed to get clean using this program if that person's high? It also talks about replacing one drug for another. And what I think is really, really important to understand through the medical and scientific communities in, as I said, check out my other video, Medically assisted treatment is not considered take, substituting one drug for another. Medically assisted treatment was brought about because of the brain chemistry changes due to opioids, right? Opiates actually change a person's brain chemistry. It causes brain damage. 
And by being on medically assisted treatment, it actually helps accelerate the repair of that damage to the brain. And so if you were in a Narcotics Anonymous meeting and you were in withdrawal, you're very unlikely to hear a message, right? At least at the beginning. But if you are in a Narcotics Anonymous meeting and you're on medically assisted treatment, your brain is in a much clearer state because it, it's keeping you stable and you're much better able to hear a message. No, it's not to say that this video is not promoting medically assisted treatment to anybody, right? It's simply saying that the biggest problem that I see in Narcotics Anonymous today is judgment. If our primary purpose is to carry the message to the addict who still suffers, and we want to see people live, then we need to stop judging people who are medically assisted treatment. We don't have to believe that a person is clean if they are taking medically assisted treatment. But we are not allowed to tell them that they're not. That is between that person, their sponsor, and their higher power, right? And I want you to think about this. If you were, as a member of Narcotics Anonymous, if you were sitting in a meeting and someone went and picked up a six-month key tag having a needle stuck out of their arm, we wouldn't tell them they couldn't have it. We wouldn't call them out in front of the meeting and say, well, you're clearly using. What would we do? We'd give them the key tag, we would give them a hug, and we would tell them to keep coming back, right? And I think what's important is that people who are on medically assisted treatment have actually had to start an entirely new fellowship. Not because they think medically assisted treatment is the answer, because here's the crazy part, right? If you go into a doctor and you are prescribed medically assisted treatment, whether it be Suboxone, Methadone, Vivitrol, any of them, right? Almost all, especially Suboxone, you are required by your doctor to do a program such as Narcotics Anonymous. Most doctors will not even prescribe Suboxone unless you are either seeing regu a regular therapist, you're in some type of group treatment, or you go to Narcotics Anonymous. And the reason they do that is because it is called medically assisted treatment. Nowhere, nobody says that medications like that are a cure. Narcotics Anonymous says that there's a solution and we can teach it to you, right? So, but by telling people who are on medically assisted treatment that they're not welcome, I think is doing our entire organization a disservice. We don't have to worry about another person's clean time. And I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this because people are, because people know my stance on this issue, I have a lot of people who talk to me. I would bet you that you have people in high levels of service all across Narcotics Anonymous who take medically assisted treatment who don't say anything about it. And you would never know. And that's the thing. If a person is taking those medications correctly, you would never know. You would have no idea. And so I understand completely if you have somebody who is preaching about, let's say you chair a meeting and you're talking about how, you know, Suboxone saved your life. Yeah, that's a problem because you're not giving a clear NA message. But if a person who's taking Suboxone is chairing a meeting and sharing about Narcotics Anonymous in the 12 steps, how can that be a problem? See, because the way I look at it is this. There are people who take anti-anxiety medications or depression medications, correct? Things like Clonopin or Adderall or any of these other meds. If I took those meds, I would be using but they're taking highly addictive medications because their doctor says they need it. So why are we allowing those meds? Those medications make people high. And people say, well, that's because those medications aren't used to treat addiction directly. I honestly think it comes down to um, a fear, a fear that if there's another way of getting clean, that it's somehow gonna impact the program of Narcotics Anonymous negatively. And I don't think that's true. See, most people who take medically assisted treatment don't want to stay on it for life. Some do. Some start out thinking they're going to stay on it for life and then taper off. Some think they're going to do it short term and then stay on it for longer, right? That's between them and their doctor. But if we start making people feel down about it, we'll judge people right out of the rooms and then we are not doing our job. Because remember, our group's purpose above all else is carrying the message. 
and we cannot carry a message that recovery through the 12 steps is possible if we are chasing people out of the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous. Now again, this is just my opinion. And I am not saying that anybody needs to change their opinion. But if we want to keep our fellowship and we want to show people the love of Narcotics Anonymous, then I think it is really important that we show that love even if somebody is on a medication that we may not agree with. Too often I hear these stories of people who have shown up to their first NA meeting looking for help and didn't know that saying they were on Suboxone was going to be this awful thing. And they share that they just started taking Suboxone and they are told to leave. I have heard people be told to leave a meeting because they were taking Suboxone. Now where in our literature is that okay? Now I know a lot of people say, well that's just, you know, that's not the norm, that's not what usually happens, and you're right, it's not. But it does happen, and it happens because we have people who have such zealous beliefs about medications that a lot of times they don't really even understand. It breaks my heart when I see people afraid to share. Now look, on the flip side, I'll say this. If you are taking Suboxone and you go to a Narcotics Anonymous meeting, it's probably not the best place to share about being on Suboxone, right? Because Narcotics Anonymous is a program of 12 steps in complete abstinence. So sharing about how a medication is helping you doesn't really align with the program. Now, there is nothing wrong with finding a sponsor who accepts you for the medications that your doctor tells you you should be on, right? That is one of those conversations that you have with people of recovery outside of the rooms of NA. And I don't mean this just about medically assisted treatment. I don't think that people should be talking about any medications that they're on inside of a Narcotics Anonymous meeting. Because to me, that's an outside issue. We have people who are bipolar. We have people who are schizophrenic and depressed and anxiety and all these issues, right? We have a lot of mental illness in Narcotics Anonymous. So there's a lot of people on a variety of medications. But Narcotic, Narcotics Anonymous doesn't talk about medications, right? We talk about the principles of the 12 steps. I think we need to stop putting medically assisted treatment in its own class and talk about medications as all medications prescribed by your doctor. How can somebody, and like this is where it gets crazy to me, right? If you take medically assisted treatment and somebody tells you you're not clean, right? But that same person will tell somebody who had major surgery who has to take opiates for a month that as long as they're taking them as prescribed, they're still clean. Well, how can you have it both ways? If a person's taking their drug of choice under a doctor's care because they need it, how is a person taking medically assisted treatment under their doctor's care because they need it any different? We have to stop judging people regardless, even if we don't believe in what they're saying. It's okay not to agree with me. It is okay. You don't have to. In fact, most, a lot of people in Narcotics Anonymous don't. But more than anything else, I beg of people. We need to stop chasing people out of the rooms because they're doing what their doctor tells them to. In our program, we constantly tell people, we're not doctors. Listen to your doctor. Follow your doctor's suggestions. Well, if that person's doctor is saying you need medically assisted treatment so you don't die, who are we to tell them that they're not clean? Who are we to make them feel guilty for following their doctor's orders? We can't have it both ways. We're supposed to be a program of love and acceptance, so let's do that to everybody. All right, so that's my thoughts on what Narcotics Anonymous says about medically assisted treatment. I am sure, I am sure that some of you watching this are going to want to go off. So feel free. All I ask is that you be kind and remember that we do have newcomers who will watch this video and have their own opinions, right? I don't want any comment to scare off somebody who may want to come into Narcotics Anonymous for the first time. So if you want to disagree, if you want to tell me I'm terrible and whatever, that's okay. But try to do so in a way that's not going to scare somebody out of NA who's reading the comment section. If we can do that, I think we can have a good discussion. Also, if you want to talk about this in more detail, in a more conversational type of way, join my Discord. The link is in the description. I would absolutely love to have a conversation because, as I said, this is not the popular opinion. And I, I know, I know, 
going in that a lot of people are not going to like this video. But I think it's important for those who are on medically assisted treatment and who are in Narcotics Anonymous to know that they are not alone. That's all we all want is to feel loved. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope that it's more helpful than hurtful. Again, please, please remember, my opinions do not represent the program. I am just a member of Narcotics Anonymous sharing my own personal beliefs on what I think the program is saying, but I am in no way, no way like a spokesperson for the program or like a, you know, all-knowing person. None of us are. We're all just people in a program. So... Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great week, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye, guys.